Maybe it's the gray skies and prolific rainfall. The northwest part of Washington state can seem a dreary place at times, which is what made Oakley Carlson's beaming smile stand out even more. She was funny. She loved when we would laugh, so she was always just acting silly or doing things to make us laugh. And Jamie Jo uh, Hiles was Oakley's foster mother. She and her husband Eric had Oakley with them from the age of seven months until just before her third birthday. Oakley, what are you eating? Pie. 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 Dance recitals, beaches, trick or treating, a normal happy home. It was just such a good bond. I felt like we were just such a good family. Like we felt like a nuclear family. Then that bond was horribly broken when the state ordered that Oakley be reunified with her birth parents in 2019. But now, over two years later, Oakley is missing, not seen since February of last year. Her biological parents are behind bars in a Montesano, Washington jail. Abandonment of a dependent child, reckless endangerment with drugs. The reckless endangerment charge is over withholding necessary medication meant for one of their other children. Sheriff's Deputy Kevin Schrader is part of a team of investigators looking for Oakley and looking into what may have happened to her. You know, we were first aware of it in December 2021 when a family friend contacted us and they were concerned about, they'd been to the location several times and had not seen Oakley, but have seen the other siblings um, that were there. So. This was after a November 2021 house fire at the home where Oakley lived with her biological parents, Jordan Bowers and Andrew Carlson, and her three siblings in Oakville, Washington. It was then that Oakville school principal Jessica Swift noticed something was amiss. Jordan had let us know that there was a fire. And so I'd gone out to check on them and offer support and drop off supplies from the school right after their fire. And I saw all the other kids running around and playing and I didn't see Oakley. And I thought it was a little odd and I asked where she was and they told me that she was in her room in timeout. Then a few weeks later, another visit and no sign of the little girl. It was only when one of Oakley's siblings, a friend of Swift's daughter, was at the Swift's house. On a play date with my daughter, with Oakley's sister, I asked questions about Oakley. It came out over the course of those questions that Oakley wasn't living with them anymore. I can't describe the feeling I had in that moment sitting on that couch next to that little girl when she said that. That December interaction was when Jessica knew it was time to escalate things. Immediately contacted Grace Harbor Sheriff and got the ball rolling that way. Processed the house, interviewed the children that were there at the house, and it had been some time since they had been seen Oakley. Now they're young children and they can't, you know, answer you directly, but it, it led us to believe that Oakley wasn't even there at the time of the fire, and it had been months prior to that that any of the children had even seen her. This smells of obstruction of justice, doesn't it? Yes. Investigators saw other obvious signs that Oakley had not been at the house. We did not notice any bedroom set up for Oakley downstairs where everybody else had bedrooms set up. On top of that, Schrader said they saw no clothing belonging to Oakley. The family had moved to a hotel in nearby Tumwater, but were back and forth to the house, raising another red flag. Their vehicle that they had left the Tumwater Hotel with and then traveled back down to Oakville had one car seat in it. And there was a two-year-old sibling as well as a six-year-old sibling of Oakley that was would have been in the car at that time. To foster mom Jamie Jo Hiles, the revelation that Oakley was missing was a compounding heartbreak, forcing her to relive the day the smiling girl was taken from the safety of her foster home, the last day she ever saw her. We just chilled out on the couch, and then the driver picked her up at 10 o'clock, and um, I don't know if I've ever cried so hard in my life. She's happy because she gets to see her sister, but she's also kind of confused because why, why am I crying? Why is dad crying? And for Hiles, those tears have now turned to something else. I am so angry. I am so angry and I know that- like, She's angry, she says, because it did not have to be this way. Right now I'm very angry at our social worker and at the state of Washington. Why have I reached out to people in government and haven't heard back yet? But mostly she thinks about how it could have been different, how the horrors alleged in police reports didn't have to happen. I think about the abuse that happened, like hearing from the police reports about Oakley being starved. What did it, mama? Or that she was beaten with a belt. Mm -hmm. Or that she was locked in a cabinet. What is it, can you tell me? Um, it's cheese and what? 
and cookie. That's the stuff I think about before I go to sleep. I think we'll come to a, a closure on this case. If Oakley would have stayed in my care, that would have never have happened to her, ever. I'm hopeful that Oakley is found and she's found alive, you know, but there are, you know, pieces inside of me that think that that might not be reality, just given the investigation. What sustains the Hiles is that whatever may have happened to Oakley for half of her still short life, they showed her what love was. I hope that when she was scared, when she was locked in a cabinet or when she was afraid about something, I hope that she remembered that, like, she had us. Marnie, uh, you know, this this story obviously is, is just so, so sad. I, I reached out to the lawyers for uh, the biological parents of Oakley Carlson, uh, Andrew Carlson and Jordan Bowers. Their lawyer said that they didn't want to speak. And we reached out to the Department of Children, Family or Youth and Family here in Washington. And they're not able to speak. They're not able to even say to us that a child is in a foster home. And let me tell you something about that foster home. Um, the concept of love is one of those things that's really difficult to describe, Marnie, but when I was in that home in Elma, Washington yesterday, the home that, that uh, Oakley was able to call home for those two and a half years, you did feel love. I mean, it was, uh, it was in the air, and that is what makes this so tragic, is that she was really taken from that place and put into a place, and we don't know what has happened to her. Arnold. And you could see that love on her face in those home videos of her talking and laughing and smiling. Uh, Michael, there's so much that is troubling about this and heartbreaking about Oakley's disappearance. I think one of the things that stands out is it was 10 months since Oakley was last seen, but we only learned about her disappearance two months ago. The big question is how does something like that happen? How does she go undetected for so long? Exactly, right? A five-year-old. How do you not know that a five-year-old, or at that time, four-year-old, uh, is not even seen for, for such a long period of time? Well, for one thing, uh, Oakley was not enrolled in the Oakville school where all of these kids and these teachers are one of the principals that we spoke to, uh, a principal there at the Oakville school. She wasn't enrolled there. You don't even have to be in the state of Washington. Uh, you're not mandated to be enrolled in school until you're eight years old. So her absence from school wasn't something that would have been recorded. Again, Again, though, there were grandparents who hadn't seen her, uh, and there should have been, the, the families are saying, there should have been uh, some oversight during that period if she was put in a house, uh, reunified with her family, and they knew that there were problems with that family. She should have been monitored more closely. That's what uh, Jamie Jo Hiles is trying to do now, is to make sure that this monitoring happens in a more concentrated way, and, and certainly in a more effective way. Wow. And people didn't know that gap of time she was missing, but they sure know now, not just in that area and across the state of Washington, but across the country, Michael, this has generated so much interest. A moment ago, I said at home, we have received multiple requests over the last couple of months to cover this case in our missing series. People out there care about this little girl. Yeah, and it's not hyperbole to say that we've gotten so many requests to cover the story. It's active on Twitter. There are people that spend every day in this community, but just also in the sort of wider uh, national and international even community saying that we have to keep our eyes on this story so that we find out what happened uh, to, to Oakley. Uh, the police here, the police in, in Montesano that we met with yesterday, they have five people who are full-time dedicated to this every day, looking into what may have happened, combing over cell phone records, trying to see if they can get one of those two biological parents to turn against the other so that they can find out the full story of what happened there. But none of this, as you said, Marnie, happens uh, without all of the interest from the people who follow these cases and the people who asked us to do what we're doing here tonight. Hmm. And Marnie. Michael, real quickly, what do we know about these parents and also Oakley's siblings? Where are they tonight? The siblings are in foster homes uh, and the parents are in jail. They're in jail on an interesting charge. They're going to be in front of a judge in April, April 19th. They go before the court, uh, but they're in jail on reckless endangerment because they did not give uh, prescribed medicine to one of their other children. It was a way to get them arrested. First, there was a manslaughter charge that was dropped. They're not in jail for anything having to do with Oakley but they're in jail so that they can find out what did happen to Oakley. 
Well, it's possible she is out there and someone will recognize her. Michael Schur, we appreciate your reporting on this. And if you at home have any information on the whereabouts of Oakley Carlson, call the Graves Harbor County Sheriff. We have put that number on your screen tonight. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.